Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers, on our father Adam, our father Abraham, on Moses, on Jesus, and on his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. I greet you there in France uh, from my sitting room here in the Caribbean island of Trinidad with the greeting of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In uh, just a few days from now, this coming weekend, your presidential elections are going to be completed and France will have a new head of government, head of state. And uh, many of you are writing to me and asking for advice as to whether you should participate in the elections and if you are to do so, which candidate of the two should you support? And I have been <laughs> responding to these emails and these requests by asking you to go to my website, uh, imranhussein.org, and search for an essay which I wrote many moons ago uh, entitled, Can Muslims vote in elections of the modern secular state, like the Republic of France, a modern secular state. Uh, but uh, many people today don't have time to read. They want knowledge on the plate in front of them without having to go and search, search for it. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to record this very brief uh, uh, video um, and I hope that uh, someone can translate it to French. Uh, I will speak slowly. Uh, those of you who know some English will be able to understand. And uh, if not, well then, if someone can kindly translate to French, uh, put French subtitles uh, before the elections take place uh, this coming weekend, you will then be able to benefit from whatever I have to offer tonight. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that it is really uh, not true that the electoral process in the modern secular state is the only and only way, the real way, in which you can gain power and you can take charge of a country and you can affect the affairs of that country. And there is no other way other than voting in elections and finding, trying to win the elections and form the government. That is not true. We just had uh, elections in the United States which were over a long period of time. The drama was going on for so long. You know what American elections are like. And at the end of it all, uh, one candidate became the president of the United States of America. And we know what has happened since then. Those who control power in the United States have, have brought him to his knees. And he now has to follow their diktat, the one who came to power through the electoral process, Donald Trump. And so to say that you have to join in the electoral process, you have to fight the elections, you have to win the elections if you want to take power, that is not correct, not at all. The American ex experience is now there before the whole world to see that Donald Trump does not wield power in the United States, no. Uh, so then what is the alternative? The alternative that Islam has to offer is that you form an alliance. And through that alliance, you're able to control, you're able to wield power, you're able to affect decision-making. Decision uh, the alliance that we need to make in the world today 
is an alliance that will seek to preserve the religious way of life and religious values. That is what we need. And so in a country like France, your political strategy, your political philosophy should be to build an alliance of people who follow the religious way of life, whether they be Jews or they be Christians or whatever they may be, they must come together and build an alliance for the purpose of protecting and preserving the religious way of life. If a sufficiently large number of people join this alliance, then they have the capacity to impact upon the political system. Um, this is my uh, uh, offer, my advice to those who are resident in France and who want to make genuine change. Otherwise, it's like a musical chair. You put this one as president and that one as president, and you know what the French say. Plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. It makes no difference, really. But I have something more to offer tonight than simply this observation concerning political reality in the modern secular state and what is the role of the erect electoral process in respect to those who wield power in a country. What I have to offer, however, is to those who follow the religious way of life and who follow the revealed scripture which has come from the one God. There's only one God. And your God and my God is one God. And if we all believe in one God, then what does he have to say? About, for example, the modern secular state and uh, its status. For this, you'll have to bear with me for a little while. Let me go back to the beginning of history. Uh, in our book, in the Quran, Allah speaks and he says, he sp spoke to the angels and he said to them, Ba'da'uzi billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim, inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I'm going to place on earth one who will function as Khalifa, meaning human beings, Adam alayhi salam and his progeny. <coughs> khalifa, what is this word, Khalifa? What does it mean? What are its implications? What are the functions of a Khalifa? Khilaf, well, who should answer that question? The answer should come from the Quran itself not from somewhere else. So let's go to the Quran and find out what are the implications of the statement which was made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the angels when he said, I'm going to place on earth one who will function as Khalifa. Khalifa. The answer is to be found in, I think it is Surah Al-Taha, uh, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, speaks to his prophet, who is also a head of state, a king, Nabi Dawood alayhi salam, the prophet David. Ya yeah, Dawood, he says, O oh, David, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ad. We are hereby establishing you as Khalifa on earth. So now the word is there, Khilafa, Khalifa. And what is the function now of Dawood al Islam or David as Khalifa on earth? The verse goes on to say, Fakhum bayna al nasi bil haqq. Establish rule, establish law. Es Govern over the people on the basis of truth. Truth, of course, comes from he who is Al-Haqq, the true one, the truth from Allah. And so when Allah sent mankind on earth, 
to function as Khalifa. The word Khilafa signifies government. It signifies governing over people. So Allah sent us on earth to establish government on earth and to govern over people. And government must be based upon the truth which has come from Allah. That is what Allah has ordered. وَلَا تَتَّبِيَ الْحَوَىٰ And, O oh David, Allah is speaking, do not turn away from government based on that which has come from Allah, the truth. And instead of that, follow your own agenda. Meaning, you have your own national agenda, you have your own political party, your own system, and you decide what you're going to base, base your government on. No. Allah says, Do not do that. If you do that, if you follow what is known as the secular political system, where you're not going to turn to Allah and you're not going to turn to the truth which has come from him, this is going to misguide you from the true way. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَدِلُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ مِمَا نَصُوا حَتْ يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ Allah gives a warning. And of course, you will know the consequence of ignoring this warning in the grave and on judgment day, most of all. Surely those who are misguided from the true way, the way of Allah, for he, for them, Allah says, there is great punishment because they are forgetting the day of accounts. And so we who follow the religious way of life, who say uh, we are Muslims or we are Christians or we are Jews or we are people who follow the truth which has come from the one God, we have a duty to establish government and law and rule on earth on the basis of the truth which has come from Allah. And if we do not do that, we will be misguided and that is going to lead to terrible punishment because we are forgetting the day of accounts. What has happened is that the way of life in which government is established on the basis of truth has now been liquidated and destroyed. That was what happened, for example, in the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. They did not want this way of life to survive. Religious values and the religious way of life must not impact upon government. And so the Russian monarchy had to be eliminated and destroyed in the Bolshevik Revolution, and a, a secular and an atheist state had to replace it in Russia and in that entire Soviet Union. Um, in the world of Islam, what they did was to target the institution of the caliphate, of the Khilafah state. And the first step in the process of dismantling the Khilafah state was to take it out of the Arab world. It was in the Arab world, which is the heart of the world of Islam. The heart of the world of Islam is not Indonesia, and it's most certainly not Turkey. It's not Algeria. The heart of the world of Islam is the Arabian Peninsula. That is where Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam lived and died. That's where he's buried. That is where Allah has his holy house, built by Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Kaaba. The Kaaba is not in Jakarta. The Kaaba is not in Algiers. The Kaaba is in Mecca. The Hajj is not in, uh, excuse me, in Kuala Lumpur. The Hajj is in Mecca. That's the heart. And the heart of the Arab world, the heart of the Muslim world, is where the Khilafah was located. 
and the first step, a significant step of the process of dismantling the Khilafah state was to take the Khilafah out of the Arab world. Eventually it ended up in the capital city of the Orthodox Christian world. So they, to use a very unfortunate expression, I don't like it to use it at all. They say, they say you kill two birds with one stone. Oh, 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 oh. What a sorry statement. To kill two birds with one stone? Number one, they were able to uh, succeed in the first major step of dismantling the Khilafah state by taking it out of the Arab world and taking it to Constantinople. And number two, they were able to stab a dagger down deep down into the heart of the Orthodox Christian world by robbing the Orthodox Christian world of the capital city and their foremost cathedral, Hagia Sophia. And instead of that, having the capital city of Islam, now look it in that city, Constantinople. The second step, major step, was to then dismantle the Ottoman Empire by bringing about a secularization of the Ottoman Empire by forcing the Ottoman Khalifa and the Ottoman Sultan to make a number of different changes in his government, eventually eroding the so-called Islamic foundations of that uh, empire. And then finally, they dismantled the Ottoman Empire in the First World War, and then it was only a matter of mopping up operations, and the Khilafah was abolished. And we lost our, our political system in which the state was based on following the guidance which came from above, from Allah. That went from the world of Islam, it went from the Orthodox Christian world, it went from the rest of the world. In the United States of America, I think it would be more, it, I think it would be correct to say that although the southern states of the United States had the institution of slavery, which was very abhorrent, and the North, led by Abraham Lincoln, uh, wanted to get rid of slavery, which was commendable. I think there is a little bit more to the story than that. And that is, I think that the North was more secular, and the South, even though it was inst insisting on the institution of slavery. The South still had more religion in it. The religious way of life and religious values and so on, despite the slavery. And so the American War of Independence was not just a war which liberated the slaves, but also a war in which the secularized way of life was able to make advancement in the whole of the United States of America, until eventually today we have the secular political system taking control of the whole world. And uh, it is time for our Christian brothers in France, whether you're Roman Catholic, or you are Protestant, or you are Orthodox Christian, whatever you are, uh, your brother Imran is speaking to you. And he's suggesting to you that it is time for you to think. What is it that the Christian faith wants to do in the world? It should be the same thing that we Muslims want. And that is that it should be government based on the truth which has come from the one God. And if you go and vote in elections of the modern secular state, you validate the substitute to the Khilafah state or the state which is based on truth which has come from the one God. Do you want to do that or do you want to be faithful to the one God? And even if it's the last person left on the face of the earth, I will not betray the truth. I will not abandon the truth. There is something more that I need to add before I end. I'm not telling you don't go and vote. No, I'm not going to do your thinking for you. You have a few days before 
the elections in France, which will culminate this weekend. And uh, Allah gave to you a thinking mind. And you must think. I must not think for you. Not That's a very dangerous thing. When someone does your own thinking for you, you become his slave. No, don't turn to scholars and say, I have to follow him, the scholars. You must think and see whether what he is teaching is correct or not. Because on Judgment Day you can't use that as an excuse for your misguidance. You must use your thinking faculty. And tonight I'm speaking to you Christians in France, not just Muslims in France, and Jews as well in France, thinking, asking you to think of what the Lord God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one God, has asked of you that you must establish rule, establish government, establish law, govern on the basis of truth which has come from the one God. And if you turn away from that and you follow any other agenda, you will be misguided and that misguidance is going to culminate in great punishment because you're forgetting the day of accounts. What I want to say in addition to that is that the Lord God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a merciful God and a forgiving God. And he has said, tell my servants if they come to me with sins as high as the sky, I'm prepared to forgive them all. He is Ar-Rahman, the compassionate God. He is Ar-Rahim, the merciful God. He's Al-Ghafur, the forgiving God. But he says there's one sin. There is one sin that he will not forgive. The Christian know it. It's called blasphemy. And in the Quran, it's called shirk. Blasphemy. Now, I don't know what is the French for blasphemy. I studied French at school, you know, when I was 14, uh, 14, 15 years of age. I studied French for two years at a secondary school, but I've forgotten and I need to recover my French now so I can speak to you one day in French. I don't know what's the French for blasphemy. Um, this is the one sin that he will not forgive if we die with that sin. Blasphemy is not just to worship an idol or worship a God other than the one God, or worship a gods and goddesses and so on, or worship a man and God as God. There is more to blasphemy than that. Let me share with you uh, that a verse came down in the Quran in which Allah condemned Jews and Christians um, for taking their priests and their rabbis as gods beside Allah. And uh, this was an act of shirk. This verse is in Surah to Tawbah of the Quran, Surah number 9. And so a man came to the Prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, but the Christians do not worship their priests and the Jews do not worship their rabbis. How could Allah say so? To which Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, responded and asked, did they not make halal what Allah had made haram? Meaning to legalize or make permissible that which the Lord God had prohibited. Halal is that which is permissible. Haram is that which is prohibited in Arabic. Did they not do that? That is their blasphemy. To make permissible what the Lord God has prohibited is blasphemy. And to make prohibited, therefore, what the Lord God has permiss permitted is also blasphemy. Well, today we live in a world in which the modern secular state 
has already made halal or permissible everything that the Lord God made haram or permit, pro prohibited. Uh, the Lord God prohibited uh, the marriage of a man with another man. I don't know who permitted it, which book permitted it, but the Lord God, the God of Abraham and of Moses, of Jesus, of Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, that God prohibited it. The modern st secular state is now permitting it. And if a government refuses to submit to them, they will destroy your money. They call, they call it inflation, and it's the most dangerous weapon that they have. More dangerous than nuclear weapons is a weapon of inflation. Ask Venezuela, they'll tell you. Ask uh, um, Zimbabwe, they'll tell you what inflation does. Ask Algeria, they'll tell you. Ask Egypt, they'll tell you. How destructive is inflation? Uh, prices constantly going up and therefore people becoming poorer and poorer until they are destitute and they are enslaved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes something prohibited and you make it permissible and that is shirk. And they want you to commit shirk. They want you to pass legislation that a man must be allowed to marry another man or that a girl who is 17 years of age cannot be married. No, it's against the law. Why? Because she's still a child. Already? Already? Do you think I am a jackass? Hmm? A donkey? Don't you know that since your daughter, your daughters in your part of the world were 12 and 13 and 14 years of age, they're already sexually active? Don't you have any sense in your head? Your daughters are sexually active from the age of 13 and 14. Your daughters are having abortions at the age of 13 and 14. And you have the audacity and the impertinence and the stupidity to call her a child? Have you no sense in your head? Please use some other language than this stupid language. Excuse my anger. Excuse my anger, because some people are truly stupid. So they say that a girl who is 17 years of age cannot get married. No, only when she's 18 she can be married. And this law is being forced down the truth of every government around the world today. It's happening in my watch. I'm not a baby now, I'm 75 years of age. If you make haram what Allah has made halal, that is blasphemy. If you prohibit a 17-year-old girl from getting married, you are committing blasphemy. This is not civil law. This is not parliament. This is the truth which has come down from Allah. You don't have to believe me, you know. Just wait until the grave. Just wait until judgment day. The truth which has come from Allah declares that law comes from Allah. He is Al-Hakam, the lawgiver. His law is the highest law. When you say no, his law is not the highest law. Our law is the highest law. The law of the land is the highest law. The law that the people make is the highest law. We have taken over from him. We are now God. He is not God. That state is built on blasphemy. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not so difficult for you to understand. So then you say to me, well, Sheikh, if all of this is blasphemy and we're living in France, what is the alternative? I have said to you, if you can be sure that you can preserve your religious way of life in France, then you can continue to live there. Yes, of course. But if your religious way of life is being threatened, if you have to give up your religion, if a woman has to give up her hijab, shamefully, oh, this is so shameful and disgraceful, she has to give up her hijab, covering herself, in order to live in France, then what do you do? Do you give up your hijab to live in France? 
or do you give up France in order to preserve your religion? Our prophet said, and may I remind you, if you have forgotten, Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, spoke, and it's time for you in France to remember what he said. And Imran Hussein must also remember. He said the time will come when a man, in order to preserve his religion, his deen, his faith, in order to preserve it, to save it from being destroyed, he'll have to flee to the mountain sides, to places where rain fall, and take with him some sheep and goats. And so the answer is, you don't give up your hijab in order to live in France. No, you flee from wherever you're being oppressed and you cannot follow the religious way of life. You flee from such a place, even if you have to go to the mountain sides and to places where rain falls. I'm not telling you to go and vote. I'm not telling you not to go and vote. I'm telling you to think. You must use your thinking capacity because on judgment day, you will have to answer. You can't say, well, I follow the opinion of such and such a person or such and such a person. You will be responsible for whatever decision you take. I pray that this coming weekend, Allah will guide you, that you think carefully and you'll mean, remain faithful to the book of Allah if you are a Muslim. Remain faithful to the Quran. And if you are a Christian, remain faithful to the truth which came with Jesus. Nabi Isa alayhi salam, if you're a Jew, be faithful to the Torah which came to Moses. And do not allow yourself to be seduced by a modern world which is essentially godless. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.